Hi there. It's time I finally did this and broke down and did a home bar update. It's been a while since I did it the last time. Like several months, if not more than a year. I think it's been more than a year. So uh, without any further delay, I'm going to give you my home bar update for uh, the end of August 2020. <sighs> and come to the home bar. Maybe I should turn the light on? I don't know. Okay, here we are with the light on. I'm going to start at the Canadian end. Here I have a swear jar. Really don't recommend it. It's got doesn't have a lot of flavor. I don't particularly like it. I have here the Alberta Premium 20 year old as well as the standard 40% alcohol by volume young uh, Alberta Premium which I like a lot. I have here some oh full bottle of stock and barrel red blend. I did a sample of it, a 50 mil sample that was attached to that. This one here is the stock and barrel 100% rye. Over here we got uh, Lowen McKinnon Cocoa Aged, which is an interesting twist. A lot of chocolate in there. Stock and barrel single malt, which tastes almost identical to the stock and barrel 100% rye. This one here's a gem. Pike Creek, um, 21 year old Oloroso sherry cask finish. This was the, uh, I think, Canadian whiskey of the year. I do have a backup bottle down here somewhere. Ah, yes. Here's the backup bottle of the Pike Creek 21. Uh, speaking of backup bottles, I, I'll get to those in a minute. Uh, here. Mm -hmm. Forty Creek Select, very nice, whoops, <laughs> there goes the Alberta Premium. I should have more space on, on this, uh, on my bar. Uh, oh, yeah, Peated Machna Brock. This is from the uh, Caledon Whiskey, um, uh, drawing a blank, the um, Macaloni's Caledonian, Victoria Caledonian Distillery. This stuff isn't quite old enough to be called whiskey. And it was kind of closed up when I first opened it. But it opened up beautifully. A lot of peat, peat flavors in there. Got a five-year-old 90. One of my favorites. It's only about 28 bucks. Canadian with taxes included out the door. When I found it, I bought two more bottles. Like I have the back backups down here. Those are my 90s. Okay, here we're getting into the special stuff back here. Weiser's Seven Rebels. That's a British Columbia exclusive. You can't get it anywhere else in the world. I sent a bottle to uh, Ontario to my friend Barry Dunham, who... Uh, Sent me something in... Oh, he's the one who sent me some stock and barrel. And here is the uh, Weiser's 23. Arguably the best Weiser's whiskey ever made. And also possibly, potentially, my whiskey of the year based on what I've tasted so far. I like this stuff a lot. But only with water. It's too hot without the water. Without adding water. I think I added two generous spoons to it. Now here's if there's some that I haven't opened yet. Is this one here the Canadian Club 20 year old? That one isn't that uh, easy to find around here, but I did manage to uh, to locate it. And this one here is the Forty Creek Victory. That's from uh, last year's Premium Spirits release. As is this one here. The 42-year-old Canadian Club. It's in the baggie. I'm not going to undo the baggie, but it's in there. I also have a backup of a Canadian Club Old Whiskey. This one here is the much-coveted Canadian Club 40. Beautiful stuff. I'm glad I was able to get a bottle. I should have bought more, even if it was, you know, almost $300 a bottle. 
uh, down here uh, we got uh, well let's move on from there this one here is the uh, 19 year old Gooderham and Warts 49 Wellington beautiful stuff it is every bit as good as the uh, 11 year old um, 11 souls wait was the 11 souls 11 years old I forget but it's as good as the 11 souls Shelter Point Smoke Point Whiskey Edition number one. There's a second edition out, and I got one of those too. Here's a Two Brewers Single Malt Classic Cask Strength. That's release number 10. That's beautiful stuff too. A little hot, but, but very nice. This one here, not opened yet. Lowen McKinnon Peated from Surrey. Is it from Surrey? It's from, from the mainland anyway. I think it's from Surrey. Another Lowen McKinnon here. This is one of my favorites. The chocolate malt. I was able to locate some of these again after having two bottles already. And there might still be a few left on a shelf at the store where I bought it. I won't say where it was because I want to be able to get some in the future. Here's some Bareface 111 series. The Oaxaca um, Agave Spirit. And that's because it's uh, it's got uh, mezcal in it. Uh, agave spirit, not even mezcal. Agave spirit. This one here is the Mark Messier NHL alumni series, uh, where they sort of uh, not really exactly a celebrity whiskey for a hockey player, but it. Um, tends to reflect the uh, playing style and the personality of Marc Messier, the hockey player. It's 11 years old and 47% alcohol by volume. Very good. I recently uh, tried that one on camera when I was camping. This one here, Lot 40, Cast Strength. That's the third edition rye whiskey. Um, the third edition does not carry an age statement, but it's very good. Alberta Premium. This is the Cast Strength Rye. It's bottled at 65.1%, if you can see that. 65.1%. Wow. Okay. Here we have some more of the NHL Alumni Series. This one is the Yvan Cournoyer. I have not opened that yet, but it's, it's coming. It's coming. There's still a few up here on the on the bar that have not been opened because uh, uh, they are replacing the ones that I took camping and emptied. Here's another one, Daryl Sittler, another NHL alumni from JP Weiser's. This one here, Dave Keon. That's the four, of the four. That's the fourth I got of the uh, NHL alumni series. This one here is a Shelter Point, Montfort District lot. 141, bottle 426 out of 1,224. I'm going to enjoy trying that one. This one's coming up sooner. This is the double barrel shelter point. Finished for 152 days in Quailsgate Old Vines Fach Cask. Bottle 78 out of 1,644. That's going to be fun as well. I have a little blast from the past here which is the Shelter Point Artisanal Cast Strength Whiskey. Um, it's um, Cast Strength uh, 2017 release. I think I've had one of these before, and that was some years ago. I was surprised to still find that on the shelf. Okay, now we're moving into American stuff. Uh, the Benchmark Old Number 8 brand. It's, uh, I guess, the... Um, Buffalo Trace, Trace's answer to uh, um, to the uh, Heaven Hill whiskey from Evan Williams. I have here also some Jefferson's Ocean. A voyage number, I forget which. Uh, oh, man, let me get on my feet a little bit because my knees are beginning to hurt. That's the thing when, you're, when you get old, you know. And yeah, we got some Legion, which has some Canadian stuff in it. 
this one here I like a lot. It's the 1782 single barrel, or 1792 single barrel. It's one of my all-time American favorites, Wild Turkey 101. I always have a bottle of this somewhere. Another American favorite in the ride apartment, Pikesville Straight. I love this stuff too. Okay, now we go towards the Irish. What Irish collection would be complete without the proper 12? <laughs> ah. Over here we got the Clontarf 1014. That's kind of a nice starter whiskey. Over here also we got uh, Tullamore DEW. This is the, uh, the Caribbean rum cask. Very nice. Easy drinking, very easy drinking. Sweet. Powers John's Lane. This is one of my favorite Irish whiskeys. Uh, another really good one here is the uh, Glendalock 13. This is my second bottle of it. It's wonderful stuff. I have here a Red Breast Lustau. Wonderful stuff as well. And to go along with the Glendalock there's the regular Glendalock 13 whiskey with, without the Mizunara cask. I've never tried that one yet, but I'm going to. And back here, we have one that I recently tried, the Turconnell 16. As good as the Turconnell 15, I like Turconnell whiskey a lot. I'm going to have more of that in the future for sure. And we've got the Redbreast 15, which I haven't tried yet. I'm looking forward to that as well. Now we got... Uh, we got some blends. This one here is the uh, famous grouse ruby cask. Smooth and rich, it says. And this one uh, was given to me by, uh, I think it was Barry Dunham. Yeah, I think he sent me that one. This one here is the Chivas Regal Mizunara cask. That's an interesting one, too. It's The, the Mizunara doesn't overpower you. It's quite subtle. It's quite nice. Here's the Janie, Janie Walker. Haven't tried her yet, but uh, she's on the way. She's coming. Now we're going to go into some world whiskeys. I got the English. I have also the Nika Super Rare Old. And the Paul John Brilliance. This one's really good, too. Ah, what's this? Oh, this is a weird one. This one you got to be in a special mood for. This is the Kamiki Maltage. It is uh, aged in cedar wood. It's really different. Um, it's not one that I reach for that often. Here's a, my favorite Indian whiskey. The Amrut Fusion. Love this stuff. It's great. Okay, now we're going to other blends. Oh yeah, we got seem to be out of uh, out of um, out of order here. Okay, did I do the Paul John? I did that. Amrut. Okay, blend the grouse. Da -da, da -da, da -da. Okay, we got some lowlands here. Glen Kinchy twelve reminds me a lot of Dalawini fifteen. Lowland Scotch. Here's another Lowland. The Akintoshin 18. I like that one. And one more, more Akintoshin before we get back into our blends. The Akintoshin Virgin Oak. That's nice as well. One of my favorite blends ever. Johnny Walker Green. I never get tired of this stuff. I usually have a bottle lying around somewhere. And another one that I like a lot is the Cuddy Sark Prohibition. I highly recommend this one. It's not expensive. It packs a kick. It tastes delicious. Hard to beat. Very hard to beat. And for blends also here, our Big Pete. Uh, this was a Christmas edition from uh, 2019. I still have quite a bit of that. It might last me till next Christmas. Oh, yeah. Okay. Space side. Glenn Grant 12. Lovely stuff. This one here is our 
Mortlach 12 Wee Witchy takes a little time to get used to and takes a little time to open up. Here's another one. This is our Glen Farkless 12. I haven't had a Glen Farkless 12 in about six years. It's going to be interesting to revisit that one. But the one that I had was a West Coast edition with a whale painting on the label. This is just a regular 12. This might be quite different from the uh, West Coast edition, which was uh, around here five or six years ago in all the stores. Oh, here's a blend, another blend. That's a Galdron's. I'm sort of mixed up in what whiskey goes where because I was just managing to fit everything on the shelf. Okay. I'm a Callan edition number five. We got a Glenlivet Nadora peated cask. That one's almost done. When I'm when I'm towards the end of a flight, I'm always reaching to the back there because they're the, the higher ABVs, and they tend to empty out sooner than the lower ABVs at the front. This one here is the other Glenlivet Nadora, the Oloroso matured. Uh, oh well, one 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 seven. That's yeah. It's strong, very strong. Now, oh yeah, here we go. Highlands. I got a lot that I haven't opened yet. Fetter Cairn 12. This is our uh, Highland Glen Glassaw. Um, Pedro Jimenez Glen Glassaw. So it's a Pedro Jimenez finish. I like it. Got some... <sighs> Bell Blair 15, the new Bell Blair range. I'm kind of itching to try that. It's going to happen soon enough. I have a Wolfburn. This is the uh, Wolfburn Lang Skip. Okay, I haven't tried that yet, but I, I have it. Ah, here's another one that I haven't tried. It is That is teetering on the edge. Oh. I just opened it. Well, that's okay. We'll take a look here. Old Pulteney 15. That's the new range of Old Pulteney. Comes in a box instead of in the um, um, elliptical shaped tubes that we had before. This one here is the Glen Cadam 10. One of my favorite all times. Ex in ex well, it's not cheap, but it's reasonably priced, I guess, for British Columbia standards. Craig Elihi 13. Oh, ho, ho. I should have taken that camping with me. But that's good. What's this? Balvenny peated. Oh, yeah, that harkens back to an earlier style of Balvenny when all they used was peat for firing the stills. Uh, this is the Dalmore Portwood. I haven't quite got on with that, got, gotten along with that one yet, but it may yet happen. All right. What else have we got for Highlands? Oh, here. This is coming soon. Loch Lomond 12. I've never tried a Loch Lomond. That's going to be interesting. Here's the old Pulteney Huddart, which I tried when I was camping. And now we're going into the Lowland, uh, no, the Islands. Highland Park Valfather. But we should start at the lower end. The lower end of the highlands being this end over here. Uh, yeah. Jura 10. No, that's, that's islands. Yeah, 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 Jura 10. It's from the Isle of Jura, of course. Um, this is a Highland Park Twisted Tattoo, which I tried shortly before going camping. Here it is. Highland Park Magnus, the Bargain Basement Beauty. That's a that's a jewel. That that's I'll drink that all day. That is really worth worth the money. Here's a Jura 12, which is very similar to Jura 10, except more sherry tasting and less peated tasting. Both bottled at 40% alcohol by volume. What's this? Scapa. That is the. Orcadian Glanza. That is somewhat peated as well. Quite interesting. 40% also. Wish they'd up the, uh, up the, uh, 
the ABV. That would be nice. Another Highland Park. The Dark Origins. Yes, I can still get this stuff. This is one of my favorite Highland Parks of all time, and it's still in stock in a, in a lot of stores in, in uh, Victoria. Here's my Lechag 10. I also love Lechag 10. That's beautiful stuff. Okay, have I missed any of those yet? No, no, we're going along pretty good. Springbank 10. That's all right. Now we'll go for Isla. Got Ardbeg Drum. I have a lovely Bunahaven Sturidar, which I haven't tried yet, but I'm going to try it soon. Bunahaven Sturidar. What's this one? Bunahaven 18. 18 year old Bunahaven. That's also wonderful stuff. This is the Port Charlotte 10, second limited edition. This might be the last bottle of this stuff I'll ever get, but I was, I, I've been getting it for like four years, and it's uh, always been on the shelf, and I love it. It's good stuff. This one here is the Port Charlotte Isla Barley 2012. It was kind of closed down when I first opened it, but it opened up, and it's, it's really delicious now. I might do a... I might revisit that one. This is the Lagavulin 12, the last of the Lagavulin 12s that I have left. It's the 2015 edition. It's beautiful stuff as well. And here we got the Port Askeg 10th anniversary, 10 year old. Oh, that's going down fast. That is lovely stuff as well. We got a Lafragi Karchus. This is the. Uh, Ex bourbon quarter cask and all that also triple wood Lafroig Lafroggy Karchus. And this one here is the ah, this is the Sherry Edition Cast Strength Cask Isla Non Chill Filtered Natural Color. It's a Cask uh, Isla, I think it's from AD Rattry. Does it say? Does it say? I think it's from A.D. Rattry. These uh, cask, cask Orkney and cask Isla and cask Speyside whiskies. This is strong. This is at like sixty something percent, and that's going to be interesting to try as well. So that concludes what's on top of the old Quig Bar at the time, uh, at the end of August, twenty twenty. I will go under the bar next time let you know what else i got food quick food quick food quick food quick food quick <laughs> now that i'm in post production and just about done with the video i realized that i skimmed over this one several times but i didn't tell you what it is this is a brook laddie organic 2009. I'm also looking forward to that one and it will happen in due course. I believe that I have covered all the rest of these whiskies so far.